Hello everyone, Clack of the Geek here, welcome back to a brand new video, and today we're doing the big one. We're going to be ranking every modern series of Doctor Who from worst to best. So that's series 1 to series 12. Now previously on my channel I've ranked each of these series, like each episode in these series, but now we're going to look at all of them and see what are my favourites, what are my least favourites, and yeah. So, a few things though. One, it's all my opinion. Don't have a hissy fit in the comments if your favourite series is at the bottom. Two, I'm only including the, the series and none, none of the specials. So, Christmas specials, uh, 2009 specials, 50th anniversary specials, New Year specials. They're not going to be here. Okay, so let's, let's start off the ranking. Coming in at last place is Series 9. Controversial, I know, and if you do like this series, fair play to you. I just really, it, this series just really frustrates me. This series has so much potential to be one of the best series ever. Like, okay, you've got the return of two partners. This should give stories, you know, a lot of breathing room and also return of the cliffhangers. But it's the two part approach is sort of wasted because a lot of the stories are just really dragged out and dragged out. Also, a lot of the story concepts and narrative techniques are really interesting and unique. It's a bit like Inside Number 9, but in this series here, it's just wasted. You know, episodes like Sleep No More, like the fan footage stuff, it doesn't use it to its advantage. And speaking of the episodes, there's plenty of bad episodes, and I'd say there's more bad than there is good. Like Hellbent, you know how much I hate Hellbent now. But a lot of the other series, you know, Sleep No More, really dull. The um, A Shield or two-parter I don't like. The Opener with the Daleks, I don't like that either. The Zygon two-parter I find fairly average. There's only, the, the only good things that I really like about the series is Capaldi is fantastic. Heaven Sent, The Late Two-parter and Face the Raven, they're very good episodes. Other than that, not a fan of this series. At number 11, we have Series 11. Now... I could have easily put this at the bottom as well, but with Series 11, I find it more boring than frustrating. Like, it's really dull. The villains are awful. There's no story arc, so you, there's not much investment. The companions are underdeveloped, and the Doctor is also quite underdeveloped in this series. Like, Jodie, she's a great actress, but she, she isn't given much to do, so she's just... Sort of your cookie cutter doctor, I suppose. It's just, there's not a lot of nuance to it here. And a lot of the episodes, like, there's some good ones. Kablam is a really fun one. And Demons of the Punjab, I think, is great. And, I mean, the Ghost Monument is decent, and so is Rosa. But apart from that, I mean, you've got episodes like the Witch Finders, the Battle of Ransker of Coloss. It takes you away, which I just find quite eh, middle of the road. Arachnids in the UK is really bad, and this is the Saranga Conundrum. Jesus Christ. So it's a really dull, flat series, and it's one that I don't often revisit. It's, yeah, it's just one that I barely revisit. In 10th place, we have Series 2. Now, this series is where we get to the ones that I don't mind. I don't mind Series 2, but it's got a lot of problems. First of all, you've got some episodes which are really bad, like Fear Her, New Earth, Idiot's Lantern... I'm not a fan of Tooth and Claw. Doomsday, I'm not a fan of either. Love on Monsters, I mean, I enjoy it, but objectively, it's not very good, is it? I'm also not a fan of the Doctor-Companion relationship. I don't like the whole romance stuff, and I think Tenon and Piper are a little a little bit annoying in this series, but, um, I mean, Tenon definitely improves, and he does have some standout stories in this series, but I think he is at his weakest here. But there are some really good episodes in this series, like School Reunion is great, Girl in the Fireplace is probably the standout of the series for me, and the Cyberman 2-parter is really good, one of the best Cyberman stories of modern Who, and the Satan 2-parter, great story that one is. So it's not bad, but just quite average. At number 9, I've got Series 8. Now, this one has a lot of the same issues as Series 2. A fair few bad episodes like Forest of the Night, uh, Kill the Moon, the finale, Time Heist, that I don't really like. And also the companion, Clara. This is where she gets really annoying. And she's just constantly shouting and moaning at the Doctor. Like, and, it, it, and it gets to a point where it's not nice to watch. And the whole romance stuff with Danny Pink is just... I, I'm not invested in it one bit. So, it, yeah, she, Clara just comes off as really obnoxious in this story. And I just... Yeah, in this series, sorry. So the reason I've got Series 8 over Series 2 is Capaldi. I love his Doctor in this series. He's very serious, no-nonsense attitude. It was very refreshing after Tennant and Smith. 
and he's, I love his darker side and, you know, he's sort of grumpy, a bit rude. I do quite like that. And there's also some great episodes. Into the Dalek is a great Dalek story for me. And Mummy on the Orient Express and Flatline are terrific bits of sci-fi. Number eight, we have Series 6. Now, I've come to like Series 6 a lot more over the years. Like, I think I really respect its ambition. Moffat tried to do something big and I, there is merit to that. I love the idea of the Doctor being this old and he's had so many adventures that there are like sort of governments and organisations trying to take him down. That's a really interesting idea. And the whole dynamic with Eleven, Amy, Rory and the companions sort of losing faith in him was something that was really good. It's also quite a cinematic looking season, you know, with stuff like, you know, the astronaut on the lake and a lot of the stuff. It's a very bold and cinematic series and it looks very nice. There's also some cracking episodes here, like the opener is great, the Doctor's Wife and a Good Man Goes to War are terrific, the God Complex and Night Terrors are quite underrated, but the standout for me is easily The Girl Who Waited, an absolutely beautiful story. But there are definitely some weaker episodes like Curse of the Black Spot, The Gang of Two-Parter, Let's Kill Hitler, Closing Time, and The Wedding of River Song, which is a really bad finale for me and kind of derails Series 6 a bit. It's not bad, but if The Wedding of River Song was a lot better, then this series would be a lot higher up. Still, I respect its ambition, but yeah. At number 7 we have the recent Series 12. Now, is the series perfect? Absolutely not. It's got some obvious flaws. Ryan is really bad in this series. There's some pretty weak episodes like Orphan 55 and Praxius and The Timeless Children now that I think about it. And The Timeless Child arc I don't think I'm, I'm not fully on board with. But I had a lot of fun with this series, I'm not going to lie. I think The 13th Doctor was improved on a lot in this series. I think. You know, we got to see a bit more of a dark side, and that was really good. And sort of her arrogance of how how she thinks that everything she does is the right thing. I think that's a quite a cool idea for the Doctor. I thought Yaz and Graham were quite good in the series, and some of the episodes are, are really fun, like Spyfall, Future with the Jadu, and I thought they were quite fun. But the standouts for me have got to be Can You Hear Me and The Haunting of Villa Diodati, two cracking stories in my opinion but overall i had fun with this series and i, I you know I just, I just it was fun and number six we have series seven i really like series seven it's a proper comfort series for me like i can watch plenty of episodes from the series and just enjoy them you know a town called mercy bell st john cold war hide crimson horror i even like journey to the center of the tardis and the rings of akaten and name of the doctor are two great stories and my favorites of the series Matt Smith is obviously brilliant as the Doctor, and he can save some of the poorer stories in the series. And I don't mind Clara in the series. I think the chemistry that her and Matt Smith have, I quite like. And I do honestly prefer it to her and Capaldi, if I'm being honest. There are some pretty bad episodes, though. Asylum of the Daleks, um, Dinosaurs in a Spaceship, Nightmare in Silver, not good stories. And, I mean, the pond, the, you know, the first half is a bit odd. Like how Amy and Rory still here, it is a bit odd. But... I, it's one that I can really enjoy this series, and it's just fun. I always, I, you know, it's one I tend to rewatch quite often. And number five, we have series three. This is great. First off, Tennant really ups his game from series two. I mean, I don't like the whole him missing Rose stuff. I don't like that stuff. But I think in terms of his performance, sorry, I think it's a lot better here. And Martha's a great character and companion, and I do think she deserves a lot better writing. You've also got some brilliant episodes. Human Nature, Family of Blood is my favourite, but you've got Blink, you've got uh, Smith and Jones, Gridlock, they're great. Utopia, the, you know, the finale is a really good one. And there's some other pretty good ones, as well, like the Shakespeare Code. There are a few weaker ones, obviously, like the Dalek two parts I don't like. Same for Lazarus Experiment, uh, same for 42. Uh, yeah, but overall, I think it's a great series, and it's a re yeah, it's just really good. And number four, we have series four. This is where we get to the absolutely super series here. Tennant is just brilliant in this series. I think he's a lot better in this series. And it's, it, yeah, it is, it is him at his best. And Donna is my favourite New Who companion. And she's absolutely superb. Like, she has a great character arc, really funny, very emotional, and she's just brilliant. There's also some great episodes. Like, in the first half, you've got stuff like Partners in Crime, Fires of Pompeii, The Sontara two-parter, and Unicorn and the Wasp, which are pretty good. 
I really like, really enjoy. But then the second half just knocks it out of the park. You've got the library two-parter, which is incredible. You've got Midnight, one of the best Doctor Who stories of all time. You've got uh, Turn Left, one of the darkest stories of all time. Then you've got Stolen Earth doing Infinity War before Infinity War was a thing. Oh, my God. It's incredible. This is just... It's, it's just got everything, like the next three series. It's just got everything. Although I will say the Planet of the Ood and Doctor's Daughter are weaker episodes. And Rose coming back, you know. But other than that, this series is just incredible. At number three, we have Series 1. If I were to describe this series in one word, it would be fantastic. Christopher Eccleston is an incredible Doctor in this series. And, um, you know, we all wish he would, he would have done more. Which I wish is coming true, thanks to Big Finish. So, woohoo! But his character arc in this series is just incredible. From this broken man after the Time War to becoming the hero that he used to be. And... I love it. I think Rose is great in this series, and there's so many other great, you know, recurring characters like Jackie, Mickey, Captain Jack, and it, it, yeah, like there's this. It just brings Doctor Who into the 21st century, and the episodes are great. You've got some absolute classics like Dalek, Father's Day, The Empty Child Two Parter, which is possibly my favourite story of all time, and the best New Who finale with Parting of the Ways, an absolute masterpiece. And there's some other good ones like Rose, The Slovene Stories, and Unquiet Dead. That's a really good one. I yeah, think. this series is just the perfect distillation of what Doctor Who is, and it's just absolutely fantastic. At number two, we have series 10. Now, this is the first series I ever watched, and nostalgia might play a part in it, but, I mean, come on. I, this series is just still brilliant. Capaldi is incredible in this series. He's got the right balance of his zany series 9 stuff with the serious series 8 stuff, and he's a very empathetic and kind doctor in this series, and I love it. Bill is such a refreshing companion, very down-to-earth, relatable, and likeable. And Nardole is just really endearing. Like, I don't know what it is about Nardole, but he's just really endearing to watch every single time. And some of the episodes are brilliant. Like The pilot is a great opener. Smile is such a fun episode. Thin Ice is really good as well. Knock Knock and Oxygen are terrific, like, sort of scary stories. Uh, Empress of Mars I really like. It does sort of dip a bit with the Monk trilogy and the Eaters of Light. But then you've got World Number Time of the Doctor Four was an absolutely outstanding finale and probably my favourite Capaldi story. Honestly, this series deserves so much love. It's just incredible. But at number one is Series 5. This story is damn near perfect. First of all, it's the only series for me where there are no bad or mediocre episodes. Every episode is like a 7 out of 10 or above for me. Like The weakest is The Beast Below. But I still enjoy that story. Matt Smith as the Doctor is just perfect. Like his zaniness, his comedy is hilarious. But he's got a very dark side to him. He's sort of like a master manipulator. Very much inspired by Troughton. And, you know, he's just brilliant. Amy's a great companion in this. I love the Doctor-companion relationship. And Rory is quite good when he is in it as well. But the story arc with the cracking time and the Pandorica is really cool. And I love the tone of it. It's very fairy tale. It's so different from the RTD era, which is what we needed at this point. And the episodes are just terrific. You've got the 11th hour, the best opener for doc of any Doctor Who sort of series. You've got Amy's Choice, a brilliant story. You've got uh, the Angel two-parter, which is a really scary story for the Weeping Angels. The finale, I think, is really good. And there's some other really nice sort of l lighter episodes, like The Lodger or Vampires of Venice or The Hungry Earth two-parter. But all of that is eclipsed by what could possibly be my favourite story ever, Vincent and the Doctor. Um, an absolute masterpiece, and I love it. Yeah, this series just has everything for me, and it is damn... <laughs>